anchor of focus today comes from John 15, 9 and 10. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. These are the words of the Lord. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Man, what a wonderful Sunday. Can you hear me? Real quick, we want to make some announcements, some very important announcements. First of all, let me say happy <laughs> Memorial Day to everyone and Memorial Day weekend. Thank you, veteran. I would like to ask that everyone who has served in the military or, or in any capacity for your country, uh, that you please stand so that we can recognize you and give you a round of applause. If you have lost someone who served in the military, I don't care how far back it goes, I would Amen. like for you to please stand as well so we can honor you. I know that some of our military are watching on Facebook, want you to know that we are thinking about you and may we continue to pray for them. That God bring them home safe. Amen. 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 Absolutely. Also, um, I want to show you this picture of a bottle. These bottles, I'm sure you've seen. A lot of times you'll find them in a hotel room in a drawer. Um, this is the reason why they are put in that drawer. It's because of a group called the Gideons. And these are businessmen and women that put their own money together. And they purchase these bottles and they take them and put them in those places. I don't know about you, but I love being able to go into a hotel room, knowing that there's a Bible in there for anybody who may be staying that has lost hope. Maybe they'll be able to find that hope that comes Amen. from God. Uh, some of us in this room, uh, you have experienced this on a personal level. Uh, and that was the only thing you had that was letting you know that somebody loved you and cared about you. Amen. So this morning, what I'd like to, to do is ask if you'd be willing to help these guys financially, and all the money that we collect goes straight to the Gideons, 100% of the proceeds goes to these bottles. Amen. And the reason why we support them is because we've obviously benefited from them. Amen? Amen. Amen. So if you want to be able to give any amount, it's great. See Chris in the back after the service. Chris, raise your hand. I had to say this in first service. I know he looks mean. Don't worry. He's not going to take all your money. <laughs> <laughs> he's take the money that you're going to give for the Gideons. So, Make sure that you do that, and man, we do appreciate their ministry effort. Amen? Amen. Now, I have a question for you this morning. It's a question that maybe you've experienced or heard. Have you ever been uh, asked, are you out of your mind? Oh, God. Oh, every day. Every day. Maybe a few of us in here have heard that before. Um, maybe a few of us have heard that a lot this morning. I don't know. But uh, we do have a reputation uh, here at Refuge that we're considered to be a wild church, maybe. I like it that way, amen. amen. But we've been told many times, man, are you out of your mind? Well, I want to read a scripture that kind of goes along with this. The Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 13 through 15 says this. If we are out of our minds, as some say, it is for God. Amen. If we are in our right mind, then it is for you. For Christ's love compels us because we are convinced that one died for all. Amen. And therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live, listen to this, should no longer live for themselves, Amen. but for him who died for them and was raised again. Amen. Amen. If we are out of our minds, it's because of God. Mm -hmm. So know this this morning, ladies and gentlemen, that it is totally normal mm -hmm. that when you walk with Christ, yep. you are not normal. Amen. See, that's a misconception that has been going on for a long time about church people. 
That when you're a church person, when you're a Christian, when you're somebody who follows God, that you're going to be perfect, you're going to be pretty, and you're going to be well behaved. <laughs> What's that? What's that? Here's the deal. If you truly are walking with God, then according to the world, you look like you are out of your mind. Okay. Right on. Come on. And I can prove this too. Have you ever had one of those moments, maybe you were driving, maybe you're on your way to work, or, or maybe you're just enjoying a drive, and maybe you see something, or you're listening to the radio, and you hear something, and all of a sudden, bam, your car fills up with the presence of God. Amen. And you can't explain it. And you start crying, and you're talking to God, and you go to the stoplight, and you finally are wiping, oh, praise you, Lord, I praise you, David. Man, you're having this amazing moment in your car. What do you think you look like to the person next to you? Look at you like, man, that person is losing their mind. That's right. So I'm having a moment with God. Amen. When I have a moment with God, it ain't about what the world thinks. Oh, no. And that's one of the things that is absolutely frustrating to me is when the world thinks that being a Christian means that we're actually well behaved. You want to know somebody who is not well behaved according to his culture? Jesus Christ. Amen. So much that he disbehaved according to them because he wouldn't stop loving on people. Amen. He wouldn't stop changing their life. Bring it. He wouldn't stop healing them. He wouldn't stop being good to them. And see, the world doesn't understand that. The world is simply this. Take care of number one, you. Amen. And forget others. Yes. Where Jesus does the opposite. Die to self so that you can love others. Amen. And the world doesn't understand that. The world can't fathom that. And just like all human history, when we don't understand something, we hate it. Mm. Well, know this. God is, God is calling us to be different. That, that's like permission for the outcast. God wants you to be different. And it's not what the culture thinks Christians should be. I'll give you an example. If you're a Christian and you're going through trials and tribulations, Scripture says for us to count it all joy. Amen. Oh, the world can't stand it when you count your trials and tribulations as joy. Now, follow me here. That doesn't mean you enjoy your trials and tribulations, right? Yeah. Right? You don't get a ticket, jump out of the car and say, praise God! Because <laughs> you'll get tased. <laughs> You're going to the ground. No, but it's to be able to sit there and say, no matter how bad my problems are, I know that there's a God who loves me, he's going to see me through it. Amen. I know that during this, I'm going to learn something about myself, I'm going to learn something about him. Amen. And I know this, no trial and tribulation, ladies and gentlemen, has been the end of you. Amen. Because you're here. Amen. You and I are still breathing. Right. And even those individuals who have passed before us, if they were in Christ Jesus, even <laughs> death can't hold them back. Does that sound like that should be a safe person? That a Christian who walks should be a safe person? It's almost like we think Christians should be uh, spiritual gurus. We should wear robes. And walk around saying, oh man. <laughs> Everything is good, man. <laughs> Truth is, sometimes life stinks. Can I get an amen? amen. amen. And here's the cool part. Even though life stinks, God's still God. Amen. He's going to see us through it. Now, what does that look like to the world? Count it all joy when you go through trials and tribulations. Man, you're going through a hard time. I know it's tough, but praise God, He's going to see you through it. Amen. Your friends in the world would say, you're out of your mind. Yeah. How about this one? When God called you to forgive somebody, even though they squashed on you, even though they badmouthed you, stabbed you in the back, your response is not to be like them, but to say, I forgive them even when they don't ask for it. Your friends will look at you and say, man, what is your problem? 
fight back. Get them. Get after them. We'll even back you up. We're offended for you. Don't be offended for me because here's the deal. If I react out of bitterness and resentment, it's not them that's going to suffer. It's me. So, Lord, I need you to help me. Save me from myself. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 21 says this. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. We don't see others the way the world does. Though we once used to see Christ the way the world did, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creation has come. The old is gone. The new is here. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting people's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us, we implore you on Christ's behalf, this is important, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the very righteousness of God. Notice what this says. We no longer regard anybody in the worldly point of view. That includes your enemies. That includes the people that don't like you and the people you don't like. Amen. That we no longer see them the way the world does. We have to see them through the eyes of God. Amen. And that if they're breathing, they have value because God loves them. Amen. Amen. But also notice the freedom in that. Yep. Amen. You don't have to hate everybody. Man, imagine if politicians understood this. <laughs> that if you don't agree with somebody, that means you don't have to hate them. Amen. That means you can still respect them and love them right where they are. Even if they're wrong. Right, because you're always right. <laughs> because God is about this. He's about love and truth. You can't have one without the other. Amen. You can't be, oh, I'm all about God's truth, but I hate everybody that doesn't agree with it. That's not of God. But you also can't be one of love and not hold on to truth. Because God brings us some truth. Can I get an amen? amen? You know what the truth does for us? Scripture tells us this. It, if you know the truth, then the truth will set you free. Sometimes that hurts. Amen. Think about this. If you're bound by chains and those chains need to be broken off, it's going to take a powerful force to break those chains. That there has to be some tension. There has to be some stress that is put on these chains. <coughs> so it is when we walk with Jesus. As he begins to change us from the world's perspective and bringing us into a new perspective of love and truth. See, this is what this reconciliation is about. Notice that God calls us to be ambassadors. An ambassador means that you speak for the one who sent you. Now, I don't know about you, and I'm going to say this. I'm probably going to get some emails if other pastors are watching. <laughs> Boy, I wish Christians would stop talking. Can I get an amen? Amen. Pastor, why can't, how can you say that? We're supposed to further the kingdom of God. We're supposed to tell people about Jesus. Let me explain something to you. It's much better for you and I to show Jesus. Amen. Amen. See what I'm saying? I can memorize a lot of scripture. Man, I can tell you so much scripture and I can spit it to anybody that asks about it. But if I don't live it, if I don't let it become a part of who I am, then all I am is a spiritual scholar. Amen. God never called us to be spiritual scholars. <coughs> he called us to be his children. Amen. His disciples. 
Right now, if you're like me, you may not know a whole lot. You may not be very educated in theological understanding. But my point is this. If you know the love of God and you share the love to other people, that means you know Him. Amen. Can I get an amen? Amen. Scripture says this. Now I'm going to spit scripture at you. Isn't that kind of ironic? The scripture says this. The world will know that you're my disciples by how well you love one another. Amen. Not by how much scripture you know. That's right. Yeah, exactly. I got one of these friends that if we ask him to pray, we're going to be there 30 minutes. Uh -huh. You ever had one of those friends? I have. This one of the opportunities to pray for. They're going to let you know how they pray. Oh, yeah. Boy, you can tell it's about to go down when you say, hey, man, will you pray for us? And they start jumping. <laughs> and you're like, oh, man, my food's going to get cold. <laughs> but that's what we do, right? We think, oh, man, I'm about to pray this thing down. Let me tell you something. You want to know why Jesus says we need to be like children? Because children don't know how to perform. Amen. Children are just children. Yeah. In fact, children are looking to do one thing. Have fun. Yeah. Yeah. They don't care who they're having fun with. Nope. They don't care about the color, the color of your skin or how much money your parents make or don't make or what language you speak or where you came from. No, they just want to know, do you want to be the bad guy or the good guy? That's right, man. Because we're playing cops and robbers. Yeah, man. And we're going to switch or we're going to play freeze tag. And, and think about that. They don't even know each other, but they have no problem crawling under somebody's legs to free them up. <laughs> Kids don't care. No wonder God goes, man, y'all could learn something. Amen. Go watch these kids on the playground. Yeah. <laughs> we should be doing the same thing. That's right. I don't care where you come from. I don't care the differences between you and me. In fact, if I no longer look at you the way the world does, I look at you the way God does, then man, you deserve my love. Amen. That you're worthy of it. I want to give it to you because God loves me. Yeah. Let me tell you this right now. <laughs> I do not support church terrorists. You've met them, I promise you. Those people that I will tell you how you need to be. That's a church terrorist. No, here's what we need to say. Man, let me love on you and let God show us who we need to be. Then we'll let God do his thing. And that's when we begin to be reconciled back to God. See, here's a tragedy that happens. Is we hear about Jesus, and that's a great thing. But then we come to Jesus to meet him, and we meet Jesus, and Jesus embraces us. And he forgives us of our sins. Can I get an amen? amen. But then Jesus says this, now walk with me. But what we do is we say, no. Now that I believe in you, I want you to bless my world. <laughs> but God says, no, 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 if you're of me. I don't want you to be of that world anymore. But Jesus, it says in your scripture, here we go, right? You have to do what I say. Jesus is like, you're reading that one real wrong. <laughs> yeah, your interpretation is a little bit messed up. You see, it's not that I should be of your mind. It's that you should be of mine. And I'm going to take you out of this world. And I'm going to put you in a world that... Your world can't even fathom. Oh, Lord, what does it look like? A world of peace. A world of joy. Not just emotions. A world of passion. A world of strength and overcoming. It doesn't mean that you're not going to have trials and tribulations in life. But it means that you won't be alone. And it means that you will not be defeated within those trials and tribulations. Amen. Man, who doesn't want that? But you and I have to leave our world. And guess what that does? It makes us look like we are out of our minds. I think we should speak for God through love. Have you ever encountered somebody who does not think the way that you think? I remember... A friend of mine who actually goes to this church, you actually guys see him every Sunday, I'm not going to bring his name up, but he had a friend of his that is an atheist. And the friend came up to him and said, when are you going to try to take me to coffee? And he says, oh, we'll go to coffee anytime you want. 
He says, right, let's go to coffee. So they go to coffee. They sit down. They order their coffee. And my friend goes, man, how are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing good. How are you doing? Mm. I'm doing good, man. Tell me about what's going on in life. How's work going? About 30 minutes into the conversation, the other guy gets so angry and says, are you not going to try to talk to me about Jesus? <laughs> I'm an atheist, and I know you're going to try to talk to me about Jesus. My friend goes, oh, I'm just having coffee. <laughs> <laughs> and that guy went, you mean you're not going to try to force me to think the way you think? No, no I wanted to have coffee with you because I actually like you. Amen. Amen. I actually care about you. I may not agree with you. You may not agree with me. But I promise you, I truly care about you. That's when that person started thinking about maybe this God's real. Amen. Not because of the ability of debate, but because of love. Amen. See, that's what this scripture talks about. It says Christ's love compels us. I want to love you not because I'm afraid God's going to get me if I don't. <laughs> Have you ever thought that way about God? I better follow God or he's going to make my life miserable. No, you do a good job of that on your own. Amen. Right? Don't be blaming God for things we do wrong. Going back to that ticket. Lord, why would you let me get a speeding ticket? Because you won't stop speeding. <laughs> it's simple, Travis. Reap what you sow. Drive under the speed limit. No ticket. What's the problem here? Amen. I gave you a brain. <laughs> But the fact that our love for others is the process that God uses to change lives. Pastor Allen says it better than I've ever heard it before. We call these Allenisms. Every now and then Pastor Allen will say something and all of us will go, yeah, we need to write that one down. <laughs> this is what he says. If your intent to love me is to get me saved... You're not loving me correctly. Amen. Your intent to love me should be simply because God loves you. Amen. And we need to love each other the way that God loves us. And see, that's his perspective. That's how God sees people. Man, the world will try to tell us that these people are evil and these people are good. Well, here's a, a huge news flash. Ready? We're recording this Fox News Live CNN. And here we go right now. <laughs> news flash. Everybody's evil. Amen. If it's just about us, if it's about humanism, we're all prideful, greedy, arrogant, and foolish. Amen. That's why we need a Savior. Amen. Somebody who can come in and say, let's get rid of your way of thinking. Let's adopt mine. Well, how long will this last? Through eternity. Amen. Because it's not of your world. See, we have to be reconciled to God. There has to be a growing process. You cannot sit there and say, I am of Christ and not be changed. Now, follow me here. I have tried my hardest to change myself for God. Has anybody ever tried that? Lord, I'm going to change myself for you. It says I'm a new creation. Therefore, I want to be this for you. Now, where's my focus? Amen. Back to self. Well, pastor, how do we do this? You focus on his love yep. for you. Amen. And I know all of us in this room sit here and say, okay, pastor, I get that. God loves me. No, you really don't understand. He loves you. Amen. I went shopping with my youngest daughter yesterday. <laughs> Have fun. Very proud of her. She got asked out of two students in her entire high school to represent their school at this girl state that they do for the state of Texas. It made me so proud. Absolutely. So proud. But my daughter's no fool. <laughs> Daddy, don't you think I need some new clothes? <laughs> to represent you in the school. I'm like, okay, and we're driving there, and she says this, Dad, I love hanging out with you and shopping with you. And I was like, yeah, I know you do. <laughs> You're the 
you're watching your mama too much. <laughs> we go in there, and I kid you not, she's picking everything out, and I'm just, dads, I don't know if you do this too, or husbands, and you just follow with the basket, and you're just running that total. <laughs> ben, can we find a cheaper shirt? They got some on clearance over there that are for little boys. <laughs> I got done with shopping with her, and we had talked and talked and talked. We're driving home, and I looked at her and I said, Baby, man, I'm about to I love you. And she's like, I love you. And I'm like, No, baby, you don't get it. And I didn't. It just is within me. I love you so much. I could literally hug you and kiss you to death. I love you so much and there's nothing you can do to make me stop loving you. And I remember in my heart, God going, Travis, that's just the beginning of how I feel about you. Oh, amen. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, I know this world and its worldly point of view has these standards and disqualifications and failures that it's real easy to the world to look at us and say, you have no value. That's right. I don't think you and I fully understand that passion that God loves us with. And when we begin to understand that, I promise you that is when you and I begin to change. Amen. That's when we begin to see the world differently. So we must be reconciled to God. Focus on that love of God. Now notice this, John 15, verses 12 through 17 says this. My command is this, love each other as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command. I no longer call you servants. And here's why, because a servant doesn't know his master's business. Instead, I have called you servants. Friends, For everything that I have learned from my father, I have made known to you. Because you did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit. Fruit that will last. You know what kind of fruit that is? It's not the fruit that grows from trees. What happens when you grab fruit that grows from trees? It begins to spoil. The fruit that he's talking about will last forever. So that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. This is my command. Once again, love each other. Now, I know right now there's a bunch of Christians that would say, Pastor, you got it all wrong. If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. You let those sinners in your church before you know it, you have a church full of sinners. But that's what we want. I don't know that. Right? Well, you better tell them how they need to be. I'll never tell them how they need to be. Amen. I'm going to let Jesus do it. Amen. Because I don't want what my mind thinks you should be. Right? Because if I was to make you the way that I think you should be, you would all be bald headed. <laughs> Ladies, you would have a beard. <laughs> you would love calzones. And you would drink what? Dr. Pepper. You have obviously been watching. <laughs> you see, because my perspective is only through my eyes. Man, I want what God wants for you. I want what God wants for me. And you and I will have a trip as we watch God grow at each other. Amen. How about that? And that we can celebrate our differences. Amen. So you can sit there and say, Pastor Travis, I love Jesus and Coca-Cola. And I can go, I love Jesus and Dr. Pepper. Man, that's awesome. <laughs> Who cares? Some of us come here and go, uh, I will never have a soda again. Well, praise God. <laughs> Some people in this room will say, man, I don't want meat. I want it right off the couch. Some of us in this room will say, I'll never eat meat again. <laughs> so what? You know why I don't have a problem with vegans? Because that means there's more meat for me. <laughs> <laughs> Let me tell you this right now. 
you better have you some vegan friends. I'm going to tell you that right now. <laughs> because those people know how to make something good out of nothing. Amen. Man, they will get a piece of squash and say, it tastes like cheeseburger. No, it doesn't. That is, man, that is good. <laughs> we can celebrate our differences, right? Amen. How about the one that says, I don't believe in your God? Cool. Maybe if you just let me love you a little bit, yep. maybe you'll see how real God is in my life. Amen. And maybe God will continue to pursue you and you'll start seeing that. Let me tell you this. I did not come to Christ because people talked me into it. I came to Christ because there were men and women who walked with God that loved me. Amen. Right Amen. Amen. And listen to me. I was not the good Christian kid. That was my brother. <laughs> That's why he's my parents' favorite. I was like you. <laughs> Some of you are like, I don't know how to take that as a <laughs> uh, I don't understand. Here's my point. Some of us, we either all in or all out. Amen. We don't like to perform. In fact, the last thing you need to tell us is how to perform, we will do the opposite, right? How many of you had that uh, uh, moment with your parents? You will not do that. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to get grounded, beaten, everything. Doesn't matter. You're not going to tell me what to do. You know, it's like, you're not going to jump off that cliff. Watch me, bam, break my leg. She told you. Yeah, I still did. <laughs> You didn't know this. I used to get a ton of spankings around my <laughs> But something happened to me when I was 21 years old. Follow me here. God met me right where I was, and I was mad at God. I mean mad. I didn't want to believe in God. I was sick and tired of it. Because I've been performing my whole life, and God comes to me. And he says, you are so bullheaded. <laughs> You were so stubborn, and I made you that way on purpose. Amen. And I'm like, whoa, you're not just trying to change me. No, I'm trying to make you alive. Amen. And guess what? When I found that love of God, ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to change my mind. Because I'm stubborn <laughs> and I'm bullheaded. Amen. I'm just so happens to be now I'm stubborn and bullheaded for the right reasons. Amen. Right? <laughs> so when somebody comes to me and says, Oh, you're a pastor? I don't believe in your God. It doesn't offend me. It's not gonna change my mind. Amen. In fact, please, it's gonna happen. I believe it is. I believe A and E or some science program, they're gonna come and they'll find the fact, they'll find all the science that Jesus is not real. Go ahead. I'm still going to believe. Amen. That's because you're a moron and you are out of your mind. Woo! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> hey, man, if I die and God's not real, you think I'm going to be upset? I had a life full of love, joy, peace, and kindness, and I didn't have resentment. I didn't destroy myself. Yeah, I'm good. I don't mind being a fool. Amen. <laughs> you're not going to ruin me. But I know it's real. Amen. Here's why. I can't explain it. Amen. Amen. Well, I need you to explain it. I can't. I just know it is. Why? Because I see it in you. In you. In you. See what? I can't explain it. <laughs> I want the facts, Pastor Travis. I don't have facts. I just got faith. Amen. Amen. How about the But if you hang out with me long enough, mm -hmm. if you hang out with some of the crazy people I roll with <laughs> that are crazy about God, uh -huh. you're going to find his love. Amen. Amen. So I promise you this, because right now we ain't afraid of nobody. That's right. right? You hate me, I'm going to love you until so you're out of your mind. That's why the world looks at us and says, you guys are crazy. Yeah. All right, let's keep going. Here's verse 18. Of uh, John chapter, no, verse 18 from chapter 15. It says this If the world hates you, keep in mind it hated me first. Amen. 
If you belong to the world, it would love you as its own. As it is, you do not belong to the world, but I have chosen you out of that world. That is why the world hates you. The world's going to hate me because I love well. Yeah. And they're going to think you're out of your mind. Has anybody ever fought with God in here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Anybody? I mean, you know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Here's what I love about God. God does not take my junk. <laughs> he calls me on it. Amen. And there's times when he calls me on it, and I'm sick and tired of hearing it. Can I get an amen? amen? And I wish God would go, oh, I'm sorry. Did I offend you, Travis? <laughs> no, God's like, you got a problem? <laughs> Do something. Because amen. Amen. I love you so much, I'm not going to withhold my truth from you, Travis. <laughs> Give me an example. I've been hurt before. I've had knives in my back by the people that I thought loved me. I have been broken by people in this world to where I would never trust them. I will never forgive them. And you know what God says? Trust them. Forgive them and love them. Amen. And I look at God and say, you've lost your ever God loving mind. <laughs> <laughs> and I expect God to go, no, okay, you don't feel like it. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't want to inconvenience you. God goes, I'm not asking you, Travis. I'm telling you. Amen. Amen. You're going to forgive them. Amen. And here I go. I'm not. I'm not going to forgive them. You can't make me forgive them. I'm not going to forgive them. In fact, I'm going to find up new ways not to forgive them. And here I am, and God's going, well, you're going to forgive them. I'm not going to forgive them. You can't tell me what to do. If you don't, then you're going to be bound in, in resentment and bitterness and frustration. But I don't want any of that stuff, too. I don't know what you're doing. I don't know why you're always picking on me. And I am looking like a lunatic. Because <laughs> I'm walking up and down outside, and me and God are fighting. And people are going, is that Pastor Travis? <laughs> <laughs> Is he on meds? <laughs> if he's not, he should be. <laughs> it's because God's relentless, because he loves me. Amen. But I look like I'm out of my mind. <laughs> you and I do this. We should do this. God loves us so much that he wants us to experience that love. Because it heals, it changes us, and we cannot help but turn around and love others in the way that God has loved us. Ladies and gentlemen, that's what it means to be reconciled to God, to be of Him. Pastor Travis, help me. How do I do this? It's simple and difficult at the same time. Focus on His love for you. Not because of who you are, but because of who he is. Because right. here's the truth. I stand before you. I have nothing to offer God to make him love me. I lie. I cheat. I steal. Many of you right now are starting that judgment mode. <laughs> what? what are you talking about? We all do. I murder. I'm sexually immoral. Pastor Travis, man, we're on Facebook Live. Don't be sharing that stuff. <laughs> Here's my point. If you break one commandment, you've you broken them all. all. Amen. Amen. I want that freedom. I don't want to be of this world. Lord, take me to where you are. Amen. God says, focus on my love, and you will begin that journey. He loves you. Amen. He loves yeah. you. Right where you are, right where you think, he loves you and he wants to take you out of self and give you his life and his life to the fullest. Sign me up. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? Let's do this together and be the love of God as we go out those doors. I'm going to ask Pastor Brian to come forward to read it. To, share us our response of reading. But I want to end with saying this. I don't know what the world said about you. I don't know what you think about yourself. What I do know is this. That God has made you for such a time as today. 
that there's a purpose for your life and my life, and it involves his love. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen? Let's stand to you. Son of man, can these bones live? Son of the Lord, you do not know. Prophesy to these bones. Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. Then we will know that you are the Lord. These are the words of the Lord. Let's pray. Praise be to God. Dear God, again, we thank you so much for what you're doing here. Lord, we just ask that you enter each one of us and just let us see things in the world and see others in the world through your eyes. Let us love them the way that you loved us, Lord. The love that actually causes change. Lord, I just pray that you continue to interfere with our lives here, Lord. Let us go out and carry out what we learned here and love others. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming. Yeah.